On Saturday, April 23rd of this year, I will be in the Fort Worth, Texas area at Better Discourse 4. It's going to be a great event. There's going to be some great speakers like Blair White, Stephen Destiny Bonnell, James Lindsay, also Andrew from Don't Walk Run Productions, recently signed on, absolutely wonderful, Lauren Southern, Nuance Bro, friend of the channel Mike Harlow, Ben Burgess, a bunch of different people, totally stacked roster, also a bunch of people that have yet to be announced, and my favorite speaker of all time, Taba'a, and my other favorite speaker, Taba'a. So as we all know by now, and we should have known for a long time since the moment this story was conceived and put out into the public by the media and Jussie Smollett himself, that he was convicted and recently sentenced for staging a fake hate crime against himself where allegedly Trump supporters during a polar vortex, aka minus double digit degrees in the middle of the gay district of Chicago at two in the morning, attacked him for his show character arc. Crossing the intersection, I heard Empire. I don't answer to Empire. <laughs> My name ain't Empire. Uh, for the fact that he was gay, for the fact that he was black. Who says Empire, this MAGA country ties a noose around your neck and pours bleach on you. And they said this is MAGA country before pouring bleach on him and throwing a noose around him. This was ridiculous in every way. Jussie has doubled down on this over and over again. He filed false police reports related to this, and it has been proven beyond a reasonable doubt that he is in fact guilty. He staged this hate crime, and he was sentenced to quite a light sentence of 150 days in jail. A light sentence for normal people, but considering as a celebrity, he was able to work his connections initially to not get any time and not even be convicted of the crime. A very, very good sentence, a good outcome from where we were just a few years ago. However, and I do mean how and then ever, of course, there are people on the internet.com and in the media, celebrities, etc., that have deemed Jussie Smollett being punished for his crime as lightly as it was to be another instance of racism in the United States of America. So get this. Jussie Smollett stages a fake racist hate crime against himself. He gets caught doing that. He gets put on trial. He gets convicted of doing that. But punishing Jussie Smollett for staging fake racism against himself is now considered racism. That's what we're going to talk about today, specifically from the Young Turks. But first, a word from our sponsor. I bet you guys didn't know this. I bet you didn't realize this. But studies, them scientific-like studies, show that your appearance has an impact on your mental health. And a bunch of companies try to take advantage of this by selling you a series of anti-aging products that just don't work. They're just not backed up by reality. This is one of the reasons why I love Health with Justice. This collagen powder is super easy to use one scoop a day in your morning beverage it actually doesn't taste bad weirdly enough you would think supplements no bueno but this actually it's kind of nice in the coffee and you could watch your baby wrinkles go away get baby skin softest skin ever like mine healthwithjustice.com 51 percent off the next 24 hours healthwithjustice.com so we got the setup about jesse smollett's jail sentence which by the way was 150 days he was actually eligible for years in jail he was convicted on felony charges typically felonies carry sentences for more than a year but the judge wanted him to serve some time due to the fact that he consistently perjured himself during the course of the trial but also considered Jussie Smollett's social justice activism as mitigating factors despite the fact that his woke ideology is what motivated this hate crime in the first place it's the reason why the writing was so bad for the people that allegedly attacked him that Jussie Smollett made up Jussie Smollett that's the actor best known for his work on Fox Fox's empire, he received his sentence yesterday for lying to police, uh, making up the idea that there was a hate crime in January 2019. A Cook County judge in Illinois gave him a six figure restitution, probation and a fine in addition to 150 days in jail. And that jail sentence is exactly what his family, friends and advocates did not want for him. He was caught, it was obvious, he got 150 days. But weirdly, this lady brings up the fact that his family and friends didn't want him to have this sentence as if that's relevant because obviously I would hope your family and friends don't want you to go to jail if the option is between jail and not jail. And there are things that about this case that you may remember. So Smollett had claimed that two assailants targeted him on a frigid Chicago night for being black and gay. 
beat him, put a rope around his neck, splashed him with a liquid chemical, which I believe is bleach, and told him this is MAGA country, referring to former President Trump's campaign slogan of make America great again. So first of all, I'm already mad at the Young Turks for the way that they're describing this. Jesse said that two white assailants attacked him. Did you get any kind of description of the attack? I gave a body description and I, you know, because I saw this but, and you know, right here or whatever. Oh, so you said that it was a white guy. What happened? It feels like if I had said it was a Muslim or Mexican or someone black, I feel like the doubters would have supported me a lot much more, a lot more. And that says a lot about the place that we are in our country right now. Oh, you said that it was a white guy. What happened? Two white assailants attacked him and they yelled out empire, the F slur for gay people, the N word, and this is MAGA country during the course of hanging a noose on him and throwing bleach on him, all while Jesse Smollett was able to fight back. Number three. I want them to see that I fought back. And I want a little gay boy who might watch this to see that I fought back. And it does not take anything away from people that are not able to do that. But I fought back, they ran off, I didn't. But not drop his Subway sandwich. So they already took out the fact that Jussie was framing white people for this hate crime, framing Trump supporters is in there, but the fact that they were white Trump supporters is totally removed, and that's disgraceful because had these people actually attacked Jussie Smollett, the thing that the Young Turks would lead with, and we know this because when they covered the story after believing it was true, is the fact that these were white people, evil white racists, white people are racist, aren't white people evil, white people are so racist and evil and evil and white racist and racist and white and evil, right? white racist, white. You know, I know you are there in Chicago, Rayvon. What is it that really stood out to you about this case? Well, I think one of the things that really stood out to me was uh, first the prosecutor's argument that he deserves a really high sentence. You know, this is a little bit of a sidebar, but this person actually submitted an audition video to the Young Turks in order to get on the Young Turks. And I'm going to play a little bit for you because after this video was sent to me and after this person realized that this video was sent to me, they weirdly took it off their YouTube channel. So we're going to play a little bit of that just so you can have some context for who we're talking about. Also, there's some slight, tiny, little itty bitty edits in her audition video that may or may not have come from me. Then I could sit here and tell you all the reasons why I'm the perfect fit for TYT's Twitch channel, but I feel like this song that my community wrote actually sums it up a lot better. I wanna be on TY Dave Chappelle to be Jenks MVP. Dave I wanna Chappelle meet Anna Casparian. I'll change my name to Ravana Casparian. Dave Chappelle. I wanna tell her about my Dave stream. Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle. I could Chappelle. live stream with Anna Casparian. Changing my overlay would be a sitch. Oh, so you so said I could that stream it was a white guy. Anna what Casparian. happened? Dave I wanna Chappelle. be like Anna Casparian. Dave Chappelle. Yeah. Dave Chappelle. I'm not gonna lie, folks. I'm for sale. Dave Chappelle. Really high sentencing because he, um, you know, hurt actual victims of hate crimes, which is true because you know we see all these MAGA chuds repeatedly over and over point to Jesse Smollett and say there's no real racism. I know that because he had to invent this. Uh, it, it, so that part was true. So get a load of this terrible analysis from this absolutely horrifically bad content creator. The story is Jesse Smollett framed white people due to the fact that Jussie Smollett is a racist and he wanted attention. He also framed Trump supporters as evil white racists. Jussie did that. Jussie was 100% wrong. Jussie's the bad person. But somehow this discount aspiring to be Anna Kasparian of all the cringe things that you could aspire to be, Ray Vaughn, decides to make the story about how Trump supporters are pointing to the fact that Jussie couldn't even find white people that were his friends to play the role of evil white racist in Chicago. And thus, racism isn't as big a problem as it's portrayed in the media. And considering people in the media jumped on the Jussie Smollett story and they try to pass legislation based on the Jussie Smollett story, that is 100% true. Now, of course, she can't state that position. She can't point out that a lot of people are saying that there's a supply and demand problem for racism in this nation in that people on the left have such high demand for racism and there's just not that much of it to go around. 
So she says, oh, this proves that racism is over, a point never made by anyone, but the only thing that somebody this much of an intellectual lightweight could actually argue against. And even then, she's failing against her own straw man. But the idea that that justifies uh, giving him a very high sentence to me is absurd, just under any of most or almost all the theories of punishment, just under any of most or almost all the theories of punishment. To me, that's absurd. Almost any or all, all the, the theories of punishment. Um, No, that's ridiculous in every way. What the hell are you even talking about? First of all, one of the theories of punishment is retribution, that we are trying to get revenge against you. And there's another theory of punishment called deterrence, which is the idea that if you do this, you're going to get a lengthy sentence. Also, the idea that Jesse Smollett got some outrageously long sentence is patently absurd. He got convicted of five felony counts. A felony usually means that you serve more than a year in prison. Jesse got five months, less than five months, 150 days. So less than half what the expected sentence for a felony actually is. And remember, you only have to serve about half to two thirds of your sentence. So he could actually be out in about 80 to 100 days. So the idea that this is some crazy punishment, that it's over the top or anything like that, is insane. But this person wants you to take away that the system is somehow being cruel and racist to Jussie Smollett because they're mad at him for making up a story about cruel racism. But the, the cruelty almost with which he was sentenced by the judge stood out to me primarily um, putting him in Cook County Jail, you know, as a high profile celebrity who is also a, a gay man. And it's just, you know, no one wants to go to 26 and Cal as it's known here in Chicago. It has a horrible reputation, but you know, as someone who ha is such a high profile figure who had such a highly publicized case, uh, it just seems cruel and unsafe. So I just want to point out that these are the same people, the same people who every day go on the internet.com and talk about how poor white people, even homeless white people, are privileged and they get treated better due to the fact that they're white and thus that conveys white privilege on you. Well, Ravana right here is upset that Jussie Smollett, who's a high profile inmate, he's a celebrity and he's a gay man, is being sentenced to half what a normal base level felony sentence was, less than half of that, because that's cruel and unusual because obviously he's a gay and obviously he's privileged because he's a celebrity as well and those privileges should have been able to get him out of this. That's who these people People are. They have no standards except for double standards. So cry me a river for Jussie Smollett actually having to go to jail to serve out his time. And by the way, the jail should do everything in their power to protect Jussie. If they need to put him in protective custody in his own cell, bring him his meals, not let him interact with the general population of the jail, I'm totally fine with that. I'm totally on board with that. I don't want him to get hurt during the course of time that he's in jail because that's not what I want out of this story. I don't need physical retribution against Jussie Smollett. And on top of that, I don't need anything at all to misconstrue the idea that Jesse Smollett is the perpetrator and not a victim in this story, which somehow the Young Turks seem to have gotten backwards. So watching him in court say that, you know, if I die, I didn't kill myself. It makes sense that he would be horrifically frightened to go to 26 and Cal, just given the reputation it has and knowing that he is going to be a target. Um, also because he has the ire of law enforcement, you know, uh, and it's, I'm sorry, I don't think that if uh, he's in danger in prison that the COs are going to be quick to respond to it. I really don't. So here we have our close out by saying, look, he's in danger. We can't send somebody like Jesse Smollett to prison because Jesse Smollett isn't going to be cared for by the guards, according to this Twitch streamer who aspires to be Anna Kasparian's own made up imagination, what they conjured up in their brain. She actually had the nerve to say that Jesse Smollett's insane rantings at his sentencing hearing that show that he's completely disconnected from reality and a drama queen actually makes sense. Americans in this country for over 400 years and the fears of the LGBTQ community. Your Honor, I respect you and I respect the jury, but I did not do this and I am not suicidal. And if anything happens to me when I go in there, I did not do it to myself. And you must all know that. I respect you, Your Honor. I respect your decision. Jail time. 
I am not suicidal. Okay. I am not suicidal. I am not suicidal, and I am innocent. I could have said that I was guilty a long time ago. So watching him in court say that, you know, if I die, I didn't kill myself, it makes sense. This is something that sounded sensible to this aspiring Anna Kasparian wannabe. Yeah, um, there's a lot of nuance here, and a Adrian's gonna get into a little bit of that in a second too, but uh, I think he should go to prison. Um, and um, and I don't think this was overly harsh. So I just want to point out that right here at this very moment, you guys can say, good job, Jank. You can give him a little bit of a golf clap. You can cheer for him. You can be proud of him. You can say, wow, Jank finally arrived at the correct position. I mean, sure, Jank is the person who said when the charges were dropped due to incredibly shady circumstances that Jesse was probably innocent and that right wingers were evil, white, and racist because the charges were dropped. But I will tell you this, though, the right wing has been wonderfully consistent on this. They are outraged, they're all over social media right now yelling about fake news. How could they have convicted Justice Smollett in the court of public opinion without giving him a fair chance? Oh, right, they're not saying that. They don't care about him at all. They never cared about the truth. It's just that when they thought Smollett was making it up, they were like, "Oh, the media got it wrong. They blamed Trump people and they're the worst fake news. Oh, the media got it wrong. They blamed Trump people and they're the worst fake news. Oh, the media got it wrong. They blamed Trump people and they're the worst fake news. No, I don't see any of the right wing caring about fake news and if the media got it wrong in blaming Jesse Smollett. Where are you guys? Nowhere to be found. But right now, you can give him credit for saying that Jesse should go to prison. Um, now, that should be separated from, well, then why don't, you know, white collar criminals go to that same prison? No, that's super frustrating. Uh, it is, it's, it's fair to point out that disparity. Uh, and I would send every white collar criminal to that prison. I don't know why they get a special uh, privilege. And here's a, a black guy who is a celebrity and famous and normally would go to a, a country club prison, but is not. And now that we've gotten through that, now that we've gotten through the point where you could give Jank a little bit of a golf clap, of course, he immediately undercuts it by saying, what about white collar criminals? What about them getting to go to a country club prison? Obviously, Jussie's a black guy, so it's racism against Jussie for why he got sentenced to Cook County Jail despite the fact that he was convicted in Cook County. By the way, Jesse's not going to prison. I know that a lot of people don't understand this delineation, but jails are different from prisons, prisons are different from jails, and white collar crimes are typically handled on the federal level, so you end up being sent to federal penitentiaries, and you don't really need maximum security for a lot of these criminals who aren't violent and aren't likely to attack guards or other people. So everything Jenk is saying is totally irrelevant, it's a complete non sequitur, it has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but this is just another way for another member of the Young Turks to play up the idea that Jussie Smollett might actually be the victim. Isn't our system so racist and unfair to people like Jussie Smollett? All he did was stage a fake hate crime to make up racism. So we're going to make up racism about him being punished for that because reasons. He did do it, guys. I mean, I know it's politicized, right? They had originally um, uh, dropped the charges, uh, but the reason that they brought him back is because it was a high profile case. The fact that he was a celebrity hurt him. Every time you wanna give Jank a little bit of a praise, every time you wanna say, Jank, you almost nailed it on this, I wanna give you credit where credit is due, he snatches defeat from the jaws of victory. The charges were dropped against Jussie Smollett because he was a high profile person. The charges were dropped because of corruption from Kim Fox at the district attorney's office. The charges were dropped because Michelle Obama, among many other connections, her chief of staff was actually in contact with the Cook County district attorney's office, putting pressure on them in order to get Jussie's special treatment. When the special prosecutor was appointed, that was due to the fact that there was overwhelming corruption in this case and that people wanted to seek out justice because Jussie shouldn't have been able to get away with this because he's a celebrity. Jenk inverts that. He says that the reason that the charges were brought back is because Jussie was famous, when in reality, Jussie would have been tried, not famous Jussie, and convicted, and it would have been a bigger thing with longer sentences, if not for being a celebrity just as normal by a normal district attorney that wasn't in bed with the guy. Um, which is unusual. Normally, being a celebrity helps you because uh, you're wealthy, etc. 
Uh, but there's a reason for that. The reason is you wanna set an example, and you wanna set an example when people are paying attention. So if somebody makes up an awful crime against them, etc., and nobody sees it, it has less impact uh, in terms of deterrence, etc., than if it's a high profile one. That's why they should have gone after the bankers in 2008, and they were cowards, and they didn't. And so I get, you know, the. Despair treatment at times, but he notice how we can never talk about the issue on hand, just the issue on hand. We can never stay on topic. Jenk is deflecting to the bankers of 2008 that he thinks should have been prosecuted. And by the way, in case you were confused by my position on this, in case you were like, Sean, why aren't you going into that distraction? Let me address it right now for you. If you committed a crime during the financial crisis or before, after, during, whenever on Wall Street, any of these places, you should be prosecuted. I want you in jail. I want your assets taken if you are convicted and your crime warrants that the sentence of that crime warrants that all that 100 whatever but the idea that oh i could point to this and not even mention anything specific therefore jesse smollett is getting disparate treatment when we're talking about cook county and something that he very publicly did and tried to grift off of in order to make himself more famous in order to make himself more wealthy and though look you could look at that and the only difference is race what are we even talking about and so i get you know, the despair treatment at, at times, but he no, that's not how it works. Jenk should know that's not how it works. And even mentioning this other unrelated thing and trying to say the thing that makes them different is race is an absurdity beyond all absurdities. Again, Jussie Smollett staged a race hoax. The idea that we're going to pretend that him getting sentenced lightly for staging the race hoax is also evidence of racism just goes to show you that these people are so ideologically committed. This is why they believe Jussie in the first place. Okay, so uh, everybody always says, you know, it hurts people who are victims of true hate crimes. I absolutely disagree. I say that in part because the system wasn't here for us to begin with. Look, I gotta say it again because people need to hear this because what you're getting from the Young Turks and the left-wing media is just insane. Jesse Smollett framed white people. Jesse Smollett framed Trump supporters for his own grandizement in order to elevate himself and use race grifting in order to increase his paycheck and increase his stock in the public eye. This woman saying, well, guess what? The system was rigged against black people anyway, so it's not going to hurt them because isn't the real story behind this how black people have it so rough? The system never helped people out with hate crimes, which is absurd in every way. The only reason that this got attention is because Jussie Smollett is famous, but also because he's a minority. All these stories that blow up into national news stories that get the police involved, that get district attorneys, attorney generals involved, all involve minority victims. And if there's a white perpetrator, forget about it. Then the media goes crazy and it makes it the trial of the year. Why was the Ahmaud Arbery situation something that blew up into national media? Sure, there was a video, but in reality, it's because that video showed white people looking like they were stalking a black man just to kill him. That was the national narrative. That's why that story took off. And the 17 times more likely scenario or 10 times more likely scenario of a black person killing a white person, that doesn't get the same attention. That's, that's not interesting. That's a local news story and nobody needs to talk about it. But the system, the structures, the systemic society structures totally rigged against people like Jesse Smollett. Isn't Jesse Smollett the real victim? This fake victim isn't he the real victim because he actually got some time. The system discounted us to begin with, just like uh, sexual assault survivors and people who come forward about rape. It ain't going to change because like what uh five two percent of rapes are false made up just because of that two to five percent doesn't change how the system responds to us and it won't change how the system responds to hate crimes uh when it comes to Jesse small making this up oh uh, yeah the two to five percent statistic is totally made up i just want to point that out that that's completely made up it's not based in reality so what she's talking about is totally devoid of any facts in any way. Also, there's something going on with Jesse Smollett. Uh, the fact that he's either putting on the best performance of his life or he has something scrambled and it's all messed up, but that man will not drop his innocence and it is very strange. Yeah, Jesse Smollett's acting was absolutely terrible. He was freaking out, he was out of control, obviously unstable and the reason that jesse maintains his innocence is because if you say i didn't do it over and over and over again maybe one day kim kardashian will come down and say free this man he's totally innocent and the innocence project which by the way the innocence project of illinois is behind jesse smollett will get behind you and try to free you so yeah he's maintaining his innocence because that's all he's got and dumb people will buy into it and eventually the history books might actually say jesse smollett wrongly convicted and 
And by the way, if Justin gets this overturned on a technicality, which we talked about a little bit back in the day, and they decide not to retry him, the narrative will be that Jesse Smollett somehow was not guilty, even though he clearly is guilty. And this is why we should never stop using his name when we're talking about hoaxes. We need to have it ingrained in the culture that pulling a Jesse Smollett or going full Smollett is hoaxing somebody and a racist hate crime hoax to be particular. And I just am very concerned for his safety. I do see the fact that uh, there's so much disparity here in terms of how individuals are treated. For this particular crime, this disorderly conduct, the general um, sentence would be probation. So why are we straying from that? I get that the judge felt that there were aggravating factors. I get that. But what would you do if he was white? And I do not believe that the judge would have rendered the exact same sentence. And there you have it. There you have the absolute dumbest take that you could possibly have about this story. And that is, what would you do if Jussie Smollett was white? First of all, if a white person alleged that they were attacked by a black person, it would have never became a national news story. There was a celebrity in New York City that was knocked out cold by a black person. It was a local news story in the New York Post. I don't even remember the celebrity name because that's how little concern people have for the rampant black crime that happens in this nation so it would have been a story in the first place but if a white person hoaxed against a black person it would be a national news story even if it turned out that they didn't lie it would still continue to be a national news story so the idea that jesse smollett got anything but a light sentence based on what he did because he's a celebrity because he has a bunch of money is absurd in every way again he could have got a year because it's a felony conviction and he had five felonies you could have stack those sentences on top of each other and by the way a year is considered the minimum of prison time for a felony conviction but he got five months because the judge overall decided look he committed perjury so he has to go to jail because he committed perjury and that's ridiculous but he would have mitigated that had Jesse Smollett not chosen to lie directly to the world on the stand and I'm afraid that this could be a death sentence for him and going to this facility that they are going to change uh, they're going to change every aspect of his being to the point where I don't know if he's going to make it out. And he has a target on his back. And I think that that is the biggest problem, that everyone in that courtroom knew that. And they still said, go ahead and go that direction. As though lying to police isn't something that so many people have done, particularly up in Chicago, where they have the biggest corruption problem known to man and have for decades. It just it speaks to the fact that the system will often punish you for lying about a hate crime more than it'll punish you for committing one. And I am so incredibly tired of that. It's just absurd in every possible way hate crime enhancements are aggravating factors you get punished more for assaulting somebody if you yell out a racial epithet during the course of the assault than if you assaulted them regular by the way sometimes the enhancements of a hate crime can be more serious than a more serious form of assault so that's ridiculous in every way hate crimes are punished severely in this country that's why we have hate crime enhancement laws in this nation and again Jussie was not overly punished the idea that it's automatically a death sentence or he should be privileged because he's a celebrity is absurd in every way but it just goes to show you where this person's head is at that no matter what Jussie is in her category her group of people so she's going to advocate for him even though he's an absolute embarrassment and everybody should disassociate from them she is somebody who sees the world wholly in terms of black and white wholly in terms of race and that is due to the fact that she has her own internal problems that she's projecting out onto this nation but something uh that was interesting to see is essentially how Jussie smollett had so much support at the hearing reverend jesse jackson submitted a letter in favor of him actor samuel l jackson as well um alfred woodard actor and even the Illinois Innocence Project and Black Lives Matter submitted letters in his favor pleading not to send him to prison because they know exactly what will happen to him. They all urged the judge to reconsider and also uh, so did his counsel immediately after it was announced that he was going to prison for 150 days. First of all, it is shameful that any of these people, Reverend Jackson, Black Lives Matter, the Innocence Project are still behind Jesse Smollett. It is disgusting in every way and it's a black eye on our nation that this hate hoaxer, this racist, this person who did this horrific thing in order to smear his political opponents so he could get more attention because he was tired of just being an advocate. He wanted to be a victim because he could use that victimhood as currency, still has support after he was caught, after he perjured himself. 
is ridiculous in every possible way. It's not amazing. It's not, oh, wow, they knew what would happen to Jussie, and that just goes to show you all these good people are supporting him. No, these are terrible people, and they're terrible for supporting him. But it just goes to show you that if you're on the left wing and you have the correct opinions, it does not matter what you do. It does not matter how terrible of a person you are. You will always find comfort among the far left. Uh, there was also many legal experts interviewed in the lead up to Smollett's sentencing predicted he'd serve no jail time. Time. The amount of attention that Smollett's case commanded orchestrated at least somewhat openly by Smollett, who appeared on Good Morning America soon after the attack. He alleged and before he was hit with felony charges for his alleged hoax, hoax should not be confused with its severity, which is largely theoretical and opaque. I like how they say somewhat orchestrated by Jussie Smollett. It was proven in court that Jussie visited the location where this went down prior to that and he was staging it with the Osindara brothers. Jussie went on Good Morning America. Jussie made this about Trump. Jussie wrote the lines for these people, told them what to say. It was 100% orchestrated by Jussie Smollett. And yes, it is incredibly severe. We've talked about this many different times on this channel, but had there been two white people out there in the middle of the night, and the police found them on surveillance camera, then arrested them, Jussie likely, because he's in so deep with the lie, would have pinned the crime on them. And even if you don't believe that, had that been the case, and they were actually arrested, and the police were going after them with the full weight of the celebrities, the government of Illinois, all after these two innocent people that just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, do you think Jussie would have come forward at that point and admitted that what happened to him didn't happen? Probably not. So two innocent people could have easily been convicted of doing this crime just because Jussie wanted more attention, just because he wanted to play victim, because advocating wasn't fun enough for him. But instead of going with a more lenient sentence, a judge monologued at Smollett for around 40 minutes at the end of a nearly six hour hearing. Judge James Lynn scolded Smollett, calling him profoundly arrogant and selfish, a charlatan pretending to be a victim of a hate crime and accusing him of throwing a national pity party for yourself. The judge said Smollett had stolen resources from legitimate cases, creating a heater that demanded precedence over other unsolved crimes. The judge was 100% right in his scolding and condemnation of Jussie Smollett. The police did redirect a bunch of resources into investigating and solving this high profile case. There were people killed in Chicago. There's always people killed in Chicago that don't get this level of attention, but all these police resources had to be wasted on Jussie's hoax because Jussie wanted more attention. So that's 100% right. And the idea that he monologued for 40 minutes, what a bad guy. Jussie's legal team, the reason the stream is six hours, if you look it up on the internet, went after the entire case and tried to relitigate it in the sentencing hearing, which you're not supposed to do, and they consumed most of the time with their objective nonsense during the course of this hearing. So I don't want to hear about the judge talking for too long in this person's opinion. That has no bearing on anything at all. In fact, the judge was a little bit too conciliatory to Jussie, talking about how his causes are good and how he agreed with his woke politics, but this was just a bridge too far, even for this left-wing judge. Lynn also delivered his own theory as to why Smollett may have hatched his scheme. The only thing I can find is you really crave the attention and you really wanted to get the attention that you were so invested in issues of social justice. You knew this was a country that was slowly trying to heal past injustices and current injustices, and you took some scabs off some healing wounds and you ripped them apart for one reason. You wanted to make yourself more famous and for a while it worked. I will say that interestingly enough, it shows you the judge is completely disconnected with our society if he thought that there were healing wounds. This was December 2019 before George Floyd. So the fact that everything that came out as a response to that will tell you that we were bubbling over. There were no healing scabs. So she's not offended by Jussie's hate crime hoax. She's not offended by the fact that Jussie smeared white people and was trying to profit off of racism. What she's offended by is the judge saying that we're trying to heal as a country from this racism stuff and move on and move forward with everybody viewed equally. That's what bothers this person more than anything that Jussie did. The judge saying that we're healing the scabs and Jussie ripped them off for his own personal gain. That's the real issue. How dare the judge say that racism is even a little bit healing and it's not as terrible as it ever been what about george floyd what about this case that has nothing to do with racism at all yeah. but we know that on his show this morning charlamagne the god pointed out the double standard in the sentencing watch this 
All right. Well, he was um, crazy. sentenced to 150 days in jail and 30 months probation. That is wild that he got more time than uh, people who raided the, 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 the Capitol building on yeah, January 6th. Yeah, he should 6th. go to jail for that, though. Like, six months is wild. Where were you January 6th when the Republic fell? I was in a car dealership looking at a car, arguing with the car dealer over whether or not frame damage was serious damage to a vehicle. Then I looked up at the TV, and guess what I saw? On the television set, I saw the Republic falling. On January 6th, that's when our nation fell. Democracy almost died. Where were you January 6th? Let me know the comments where were you january where 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 were you january 6 let me know in the comments down below where were you january 6 where were you if like, they come feel on. That he should pay the money back for police you know resources i but feel like the fine could have been enough but once yeah. again like i always tell y'all on this radio i cannot tell somebody uh how to react to my actions i can't pick and choose you know the consequences but i think it's very wild that he got See? more time than people uh on january 6th so I just want to point out that although the ultimate sentence for a lot of people, not all of the people related to January 6th, may technically be shorter than the 150 days that Jesse Smollett got, a lot of these people were held in prison awaiting trial for significantly longer than Jesse Smollett. Very notably, some of the January 6th defendants ended up in solitary confinement, which is really questionable considering the large majority of these people were charged with trespassing. So Jesse Smollett staging a hate crime in Cook County has nothing to do with whatever goes on in terms of DC anyway, but we're talking about something that isn't even being reported accurately by Charlemagne the God. In reality, there's people related to January 6th that are charged under the Sedition Act and they're facing way more time. And there's people awaiting trial that are being held in jail for way longer than Jussie Smollett. Because remember, Jussie Smollett was released really quickly when he was first initially arrested. So the only time that he'll serve is this 150 days. And as we talked about earlier, he's only obligated to serve between half and two thirds of that sentence. So 75 to 100 days compared to the people that were put in solitary confinement and all these other cool things and not even counting the people that didn't just trespass the people who were charged with sedition that will likely face even more time yeah I, i'm curious uh, ray Vaughn's point of view too here and you guys as well audience is split on this but uh mainly on on adrian's side tina said i've never disagreed with jank more tell it adrian um warlock said uh that they agree more with me because uh the idea here that he, the He's saying the same thing that I did, which is, should you also uh, punish white criminals in the same way? Of course, of course. So compared to the two whack jobs on this panel, Jenk seems reasonable, but he cannot help but condemn white people in this story. This story involves zero white people. No white people were involved in this tale. Jussie Smollett couldn't even find white people to hire to stage this hate crime against himself. He had to go out and do a racially diverse casting and hire two brothers of Nigerian descent in order to stage this against him. Yet we're still talking about alleged disparities and how white people would have been treated better based on all this other nonsense. Meanwhile, again, Jussie got an unusually light sentence considering he perjured himself and he was convicted of five felonies. Uh, but was it a crime? Yes, definitely. Uh, was Smollett, uh, Smollett uh, arrogant and he did it uh, to gain more fame? Yes, I, I find that sickening. Uh, and he's willing to throw all of us under a bus. Uh, and he's willing to throw all of us under a bus. Again, while you can agree with part of what Jenk is saying here, he still has this us against them mentality, this idea that it's the minorities versus the evil white racists and all that. And that framing is just completely illogical in this story that, again, involves no white people. It has nothing to do with white people. Um, and Mickey C. the Silver Dragon makes a good point about a point actually that was made on Indisputable. Um, I agree that Smollett deserves to be punished, he said. Uh, as Dr. Ritchie pointed out, Amy Cooper, the Central Park Karen, who also made a false assault call, was never charged. They actually put on uh, with her second call pretending to sound terrified, should have had her arrested. See, that's a great point by Rashad. Uh, that, that our member there is, is recounting. Uh, it's an absolute outrage that sh she was not charged. Just like Smollett, it was a fake call to the police and, and that actually endangered someone's life. She should have gotten a year in prison. But that doesn't mean, uh, in my opinion, that Smollett should be let off.
Oh, he was okay. So, so can a celebrity who's going to be endangered uh, because of a certain situation do anything they want because oh, they, they they'll be endangered? Can we fix our goddamn prisons? So, first of all, it is not the exact same thing. I like how now we're talking about Jussie Smollett just calling the police and saying something untrue to the police. That's how reduced it is. He, through premeditation, planned and executed this false hate crime in order to uplift himself and smear his political opponents and attack white people racially. Jussie Smollett actually committed a hate crime against white people. The reason the Amy Cooper point is such a stupid point in every possible way is that Amy Cooper did not make a false police report. That did not happen. What she accused Christian Cooper, which was the name of the black guy, the actual Central Park Karen in that story, of doing is what he admitted to in his Facebook post. Christian Cooper was angry at Amy Cooper for letting her dog walk without a leash in an area where he was watching birds. Because he was annoyed with her, he implied that he was going to take her dog as punishment and in fact legitimately carried around dog treats for such an occasion because he doesn't like people who walk their dogs without a leash that much and Amy Cooper started freaking out when her dog started walking towards him. Now, I've talked about multiple different times on on this channel how dog moms are the cringiest people on planet earth and amy cooper was freaking out right then and there but again if you are isolated in central park and a man forget about races for a second or swap the races whatever starts luring your dog over to you and you don't expect the police to be called and the person to be shook based on your actions as any man you're crazy try it out in the park if you want but i guarantee you you will actually be arrested especially if you're a white person and you go up and do it to a black dog mom in the park so there's nothing to the amy cooper story there is no point to be made based on the amy cooper story they have nothing to do with one another and again her calling the police even if she exaggerated even if you don't count christian cooper admitting to exactly what amy cooper was concerned about in his facebook post which he did do is not the same thing as jesse premeditatively staging a hate crime against white people and trump supporters based on the fact that he wanted more attention i also just want to talk a little bit about uh, one other sort of motivating factor in his sentencing that the judge kept referencing, which was the amount of money that the police uh, had spent investigating his case and the amount of money that uh, this trial uh, was uh, cost to the judicial system. It really seems to me like the judge was very angry at him for, you know, wasting all this money. Uh, and, and that sort of played into his decision to sentence him, you know, very highly, which to me as someone who lives in Chicago is hilarious considering how much absolute waste that the Chicago Police Department uh, has every single year. We have another stupid worthless point from this person. When she's talking about how the police waste money in other regards, therefore Jussie Smollett's fake hate hoax wasting over a hundred grand on this investigation, diverting those resources from other good causes is fine because the police some sometimes spend money in other ways that she doesn't like doesn't make any sense it's ridiculous and by the way the reason he was mentioning the money is because he ordered Jussie Smollett to pay restitution and a fine so he was explaining the rationale behind that so even her point about this being related to the jail sentence is a complete non-starter it's a non sequitur it's not related at all again the aggravating factors one of the ones that he emphasized to the maximum was the fact that Jussie perjured himself was the fact that this was premeditated was the fact that Jussie at multiple different points could have backed out of it but he decided not to all of those things are what went into him actually getting jail time but the idea of the wasting money that ties into the restitution you're not following what's going on very well um and then also I know Jen you mentioned deterrence as a motivation to put him in prison and i agree that when it comes to like financial crimes in wall street and you know all of their what how they contributed to the financial crash i think that's a really valid argument i just don't necessarily see it being applicable here because are we trying to deter other people from filing false hate crime reports it's not something that happens that often you know she wants to be like Anna Kasparian and honestly she's doing a great job because there's absolutely nothing of value in her commentary and that is very reminiscent of Anna Kasparian the idea that deterrence works when it comes to Wall Street crimes for some reason but it doesn't work when it comes to other crimes doesn't make any sense at all if you're going to make the case that deterrence doesn't work because there's not a lot of good data showing deterrence theory is actually 
effective overall, then make that case. But don't pick and choose based on the criminals and the crimes that you care about whether or not deterrence is actually something that the criminal justice system is capable of. On top of that, yes, we want to deter other people from filing fake hate crime hoaxes. By the way, the idea that it doesn't happen that often, first of all, it happens way more often than this person would acknowledge, number one. And number two, just because it doesn't happen that often doesn't mean we don't want to deter it in the future so we don't end up in scenarios like this. So that, again, another worthless point in every possible way. But the thing is, she kind of likes these hate crime hoaxes. Remember, the biggest problem for the left in terms of racism is not actual racism. Racism. It's a supply and demand problem. There's nowhere near the supply to make up for their ravenous demand. So they kind of like when there's hoaxes out there, especially ones that aren't this high profile because they could just report the hoax and never correct it later, which the Young Turks has done multiple different times on their channel. Are we trying to specifically deter Jussie Smollett from doing it in the future? I really don't think that's an option for him. His life has been kind of ruined by all of this. I mean, his career is over regardless of if they prosecuted him, regardless of if they sentenced him. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't. I just don't necessarily think that that's like a one-to-one -one comparison. But I do think that a deterrence argument is particularly valid when it comes to those types of Wall Street financial crimes. What is this argument? What is this based on? How did this person come to the conclusion that deterrence only works on Wall Street and particularly works well on Wall Street, but doesn't work in these scenarios? On top of that, Jesse Smollett's career is not necessarily over. And if it is over, that goes to show that this was worth it because it will show you that you will actually face consequences if you try to do this. And hopefully that will deter it. But unfortunately, all these actors and all these organizations are still in support of Jussie Smollett, despite the fact that he lied, despite the fact that he continues to lie, despite the fact that his story was patently absurd in every possible way, they're still getting behind him, they're still on board for him. They just talked about how Sam Jackson submitted a letter in support of Jussie. Oh, I, I'd say for deterrence, at least from uh, my education on the issue, that it's based on the certainty, severity, and swiftness of the punishment. And the fact is that they're trying to ensure the certainty here, but it damn sure wasn't swift as we're two years out. Uh, and But the severity is there. So I just want to point out that what she just said here is actually correct. I give credit where credit is due. It is based on the certainty, the swiftness, and the severity. However, when she talks about how this is definitely severe, that's ridiculous in every possible way. This is not a severe punishment. Again, felony convictions, felonies typically mean more than a year in prison. He's not getting that. That's just not the case that it's severe. But it's just, I, I don't think it'll work because white people continue to watch individuals like them get away with making these falsified reports. And as black people, we always were trying to deter it anyways, because we figured we were screwed no matter what, whether we did it or not. So it's like, who are you really trying to deter? For some reason, we're still talking about white people. I've said it before and I'll say it again. There are no white people involved in this story. They do not exist. Jesse Smollett had to hire two black dudes to play the evil white racist, which is very progressive of him. But again, it just goes to show you there are no white people involved in this case. And the idea that white people don't get punished for making false reports, we're still talking about Amy Cooper. She's still infamous in this nation, even though Christian Cooper admitted to exactly what she accused him of doing in his Facebook post where he posted the video so what are we even talking about you get deterred punished ridiculous you get made into a meme they do videos about you they tarnish your name they try to get you fired from your job if you're a white person who didn't do anything wrong and now we're talking about how it's unfair for jussie to be punished because he repeatedly did something wrong planned and executed this hoax did it in a premeditated manner and perjured herself during the course of his trial uh i just um I really just see this, uh, and, I, and I'm not a fan at all of what Jesse Smollett did. And generally, I'm like, punish people. But again, I just see this sentence as entirely disproportionate, and I see this going down poorly. Okay, uh, last thing here, guys. Uh, so, look, uh, I'll, I'll give uh, Mikey 3343. He's uh, writing in a super chat, the last word here, because this is the one thing that really unifies us. Um, all, he, he wrote in, all the Karens who lie to weaponize the police against people of color go to prison, right? So that that's, so from my point of view, deterrence works if you, uh, for all the reasons, if you do it the way that Adrian explained, but also if it's applied evenly. I think mm -hmm. that lying to the police is a very serious crime. And by the way, uh, right wingers lie to the police all the time. They by the, There's a thing called swatting. Well they'll, well, they'll pretend a progressive is in the middle of a crime and they'll send the SWAT team out there and it could get people killed. 
by the way, no one ever gets charged on that, ever. So that's that's terrorism, and they get you know let off completely on that. All those Karens, all that lied and, and Rashad is right, especially the Central Park one. It's a spectacular case that was very public, like Smollett's case was. You could have set an example there. But when you apply it just to Smollett, but you don't apply it to the others, well, the lesson that you're sending is: remember, at the end of the day. You could still do whatever you want if you're a white right winger. What are you trying to deter when you're going after these quote unquote Karens for calling the police? Are you trying to deter people from calling the police when they legitimately think that something's wrong? There's not a lot of cases of actual malice in these 911 calls. That's why in San Francisco, they try to pass a weird goofy law that basically makes it illegal for a white person to call the police on a black person unless they're 100% sure because they didn't want to have these instances where based on suspicion and based on sometimes them actually doing something wrong, it looks bad on a video. On top of that, Jenk just said swatting is a right wing thing. You know who's being swatted constantly and consistently right now? Tim Pool. It's a big problem. Nobody's going to jail for the swatting of Tim Pool. Also, Jenks like this right wing terrorism that nobody goes to jail for. There was a man in Wichita, Kansas, who was arrested and convicted for swatting. I believe he got a life sentence because they actually charged him with a homicide, an actual murder charge. So everything Jenk just said there is totally 100% wrong. But again, what do you expect? The story's about a black person doing something wrong. So obviously, we have to talk about how white people are racist and right wingers and white people do things that are wrong. If you're a white right winger, you could lie to the police, ad nauseum. You could get, you could endanger people's lives, be in a way that is far more serious than what Smollett did, and you'll get away with it. Because in America, if you're a white right winger, this whole country is set up for your benefit, and and so it's disgusting that they get away with breaking the law over and over again. So that's the thing that unifies us, whether we agree or disagree on whether Smollett should have gone to prison or not. What we all definitely want is equal application of the law, and we still haven't found it in this country. It's amazing. It is absolutely crazy how they got to this point. Jussie Smollett specifically tried to frame white people on the right for a false hate crime, and yet somehow at the end of the day when he gets his just desserts, the story is white right wingers are bad and they're evil and they deserve to be punished. It doesn't matter what the story is, doesn't matter what the question is, Jenk always has the answer, the Young Turks always has the answer, and that answer is white people are bad, white people are racist. After I made a copy of this video for you guys out there, it was all done and ready to go. Ago, I learned that Jussie Smollett was actually released pending his appeals in a two to one decision by an appellate court. I left the video as is for the most part up until this update because the Young Turks made their video after he was sentenced but before he was released and I shot and edited this video after he was sentenced but before he was released. But I am aware, I know a bunch of you told me, none of you stayed this long to get this correction but whatever. I know it. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like this video, show me by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on all my social medias. You can support me via the support links in the description box. This has been me talking about how somehow in Jussie Smollett's hate hoax against white people and right-wingers, white people and right-wingers are the villains, according to TYT. Till next time.